Thank you. So every three minutes, all around the world, a parent hears those four words, your child has cancer. And whether you speak them, or whether you hear them, they're four words that change everything. And in the UK, there are about 31 children every week that are told these four words, 31 families that go through that. And the path to survival for these children is quite a dangerous road, as some of you will have first-hand experience of. Often need to have long operations to remove tumours, chemicals, chemotherapy injected into their bodies, and sometimes harmful radiation. If we look back to the 1960s, only one in five children survived cancer. Treatment in the 1960s was pretty limited, steroids, some blood transfusions, some radiation, but very limited access to chemotherapy. There were no national clinical trials. If you move forward to the mid-1990s, survival rates came up to about 50%. There was much more of a move towards specialist centres, centralised treatment, and more and more chemotherapy was coming into play. Now, survival for childhood cancer is around 80%, so four out of every five children are cured. But for those that do survive, two out of three of them will suffer some really serious long-term effects. These can include heart problems, infertility, and sadly secondary cancers as well. And as more and more children survive cancer, it's especially important that we really concentrate on how to improve their quality of life after diagnosis. But sadly, sometimes cancer wins. So in the UK, one in five children will not survive their cancer. So is 80% good enough? No, it's not really good enough. And how can we close that gap to make sure that we can confidently say that 100% of children survive? And the answer is through days like this, through research and clinical trials and collaboration. We know that research can close that gap because research has actually contributed to that increase from 20% to 80% as we stand today. And that is really good news, but actually we want great news. We want to have great news where we can say we can cure 100% of children because every child that loses their life to cancer is one too many. So trials are the only really reliable way to look to see if a different type of surgery or chemotherapy or another treatment is better than what's already available. And we need to really improve so that we can develop tra treatments that actually target not only the, only the cancer cells and not poison the rest of the body. We need to find treatment that is specific for each child, not a one-size-fits-all. I'm standing here today because of Twitter. Um, I met Angela and her husband, Alberto Bethany's parents, through Twitter, um, and it was while, as Kathy mentioned, I was working um, in her group uh, looking at Wilms tumour, setting up the new National Wilms tumour clinical trial, that I tweeted about an event that we were planning to hold at Great Ormond Street. And as Kathy's already alluded to, we were looking to collaborate with parents to really help set the research agenda for how we can take things forward with Wilms tumour treatment. Angela and Alberta came down to London from Coventry and sat in, sat in a room with our Wilms uh, Tumor Research team, Kathy and some other parents and myself, and we were really inspired by the energy and enthusiasm they showed, and the whole group, actually, were extremely helpful in kind of shaping our next research steps. And Angela's since set up a Wilms Tumor Link group on Facebook and Twitter, and now the group is over 30 members. So I'm going to use Wilms Tumor as an example of how research can close that gap from 20 to 80 percent as we are now. So what exactly is Wilms Tumor? Put simply, it's a cancer of the kidneys, which is the organ in the body that cleans the blood and produces urine. It usually affects children under the age of five, and we have about 70 children each year in the UK being diagnosed with Wilms Tumor. Most of these children have chemotherapy to shrink the tumour and then surgery to remove it. And some go on to have radiotherapy and more chemotherapy after that. Nine out of ten children will be cured with this treatment. So you might think, wow, nine out of ten, it's pretty good. There's not really much left to do. Surely we've won the battle. But sadly, one out of ten with Worms tumour will not survive. And that isn't really good enough. Every child that dies from Worms tumour, like Bethany, is one child too many. We've come a long way since the 1960s when only a small, small number of children survived cancer. And through research and clinical trials, we can try and find the best way of treating a disease. And that's how survival is where we are today. So every child I see on my 
in my daily practice has benefited from the research and trials that have gone before them. And as a doctor, as a researcher, as a parent, and as a child, we're all fighting a battle against cancer. So we really need to know our enemy. We need to find out much more about it so research can move forward. <coughs> so if you wanted to know a bit more about me, you might type my name into Google and find out a little bit about me. And if you want to know a little bit more about where I lived, you might go into Google Maps and get an aerial view of where I live. This is Kingston Fontaine in Surrey. Nice River Thames running through it, and Richmond Park up at the top, and this is where I live. When a child comes into hospital with a presumed lump or cancer in their tummy, the first thing we do is take some aerial pictures. Take some pictures. We get a view of what's next to it, what's normal and what's normal, and what's abnormal, where the cancer's located and which part of the body it's in. If you want to know a little bit more about me, you might zoom in on Google Images and walk down my street, have a look at the outside of my house, you might make some assumptions that I'm not a very good gardener, lots of overgrown trees and weeds. You might see a scooter outside and you might presume that I have some children. When a child comes in with a Wilms tumour, we look at the outside when it's removed at surgery. We look at the parts that may have been invaded by the tumour and the bits that are normal. And that will tell us a little bit more about how we're going to treat them. If you really want to know a bit more about me, you might come into my kitchen and have a look at my fridge door. You might see some party invitations, some photos. Again, you might make further assumptions that I probably have children, and I'm not very good at being tidy. Similarly, with a tumour, we go inside and look at slices of it underneath the microscope, and that gives us much more information. We learn about what types of cells are in the tumour and what, which treatment we should give a child is based on this. But if you wanted to know even more about me, you might go inside my fridge. You might find some out-of-date yogurts, some milk that's running pretty low, and uh, maybe some chocolate sauce as well. And when we go below the surface of the tumour cells, at a molecular level, we can learn a lot more detail about tumour genetics and their behaviour. And to finish things off, you might look at my recycling box. You might make some assumptions that we drink a lot of coffee, a couple of bottles of wine in there, and lots of packets of fish fingers. The rubbish bin for Wilms tumour is in the urine. We need to know a lot more about what comes out of the tumour to understand it better. We predict that Wilms tumours are different types or have different urinary profiles, a bit like fingerprints, and this is going to give us more clues. We might see differences in the urine of children where their cancer comes back, because at the moment we just look at the aerial view using an ultra, ultrasound machine to see if the cancer comes back. But actually that's not that helpful, so we need to know much earlier than that before it gets big enough to be seen on our aerial Google Images large aerial view. So the research that we're focusing on now in Gorm's tumour is inside the fridge and the rubbish bin. The molecular and urinary profiles that are going to tell us a little bit more about Gorm's tumour to help the 1 in 10 children who don't survive. So I'm blessed to have two healthy children. They're a real inspiration to me and I'm very lucky that they're healthy. And even though I treat families where a child has cancer every day, I cannot understand what it is like to have a child with cancer or to lose a child to cancer. But I do understand the unconditional love a parent has for a child. It makes me understand why we really need to do better to treat children with cancer and why four out of five is not good enough. Angela and Alberto, after the grief of losing their precious daughter Bethany, have done something really inspirational with the energy of that unconditional love. They've set up this unique day with researchers and parents and experts can all come together to learn from each other and set some research priorities for the future. I'm truly humbled to be in this room today. Thank you all so much for taking the time to come. As doctors and researchers, we know that parents, you have the expertise to really drive this agenda forward so we can improve our childhood cancer survival rates in the UK. We know that research is our best tool to fight childhood cancer, and the more research we do, the sooner that day will come where we can reach that 100% cure.